sound coming from called Hip House, incorporated a breakbeat. I myself was attracted to that kind of sound because it, I was a hip hop kid growing up, so breakbeats was a big deal to me and like trying to mix that with house music was the one. Calm Down is a track I actually found in a record store. I went to a record store in Brixton, Red Records, and my friend Funky, Funky D was working there. And he knew that I was attracted to like the more break, breaky sound of house at that time. And he played this to me. And this track's Calm Down, called Calm Down. And Calm Down is not actually a jungle tune. It's a hip hop tune when we speed it up to 45. Records would like normally play, the imports were normally at 33. Yeah. I played this at 45 and it just sounded like madness. Hip, it sounded like hip house, but without the four to the floor. Yeah. Which totally changed my, blew my mind. So I started to seek out more tunes like it. This is actually quite technical. I'm actually a genius. <laughs> 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 no, but normally you get a hip hop tune, you know, we'd be ruffling through going to a record store and going through hip hop tunes and they normally sound like this. But with the assistance of like Technics 1210s, faders and new dual speeds, we could get it to sound like this. Which is jungle pretty much. So this track, which I thought was called um, Blood Vibes, it isn't, it's actually called Jump On It. And this was Masters at Work. And what they used to do, you know, their house outfit, and they used to have house tracks on the A side. On the B side, because I think Kenny Dope was a hip hop boy, he used to just put breaks. So this is the original. And then of course we used to speed it up put it to 45, and it sounded like this. But you've got to remember, at this time, there weren't no jungle tunes around. So we used to just kind of mix these tunes with house tunes. And that used to put kind of, they used to call it like tech jungle. So it was kind of techno jungle influence. Jungle techno. Jungle techno, that's it. <laughs> jungle techno, and then, it, then it kind of just turned into jungle and that's that breakbeat influence kind of sound kind of took over. When we started to create the sound, what started to happen, um, we realised on the dance floor at Rage that people were kind of gravitating towards that kind of breakbeat sound. You've got to remember Rage was a house club and we used to throw in the odd kind of breaks and we just noticed that the crowd kind of gravitated towards that kind of sound. So. Little by little, um, the first tune that I can remember was We Are E. I remember hearing that and I was thinking, that's what me and Groove have been wanting to hear for a little while. We Are E was sounding like hip house. Yeah, but exactly. It was a British version of hip house, pretty much. With a lots of sub bass and... and, and it's, it's faster. Faster. And it just had a different kind of vibe. The break was more prominent in it yeah, as well. Yeah, 100%. And then, then we started to get labels like I be for records, living dream, and you know, before we knew it, there was kind of like, you know, we could actually do a set of breakbeat influenced tunes. So yeah, it, it, that's how it kind of moved from calm down to it becoming jungle. We I E, uh, champion sound as well. Um, LFO. LFO, oh god, yeah. LFO. Renegade Soundwave, yeah. The Phantom. Yeah. yeah. There's so many tunes. So many. Yeah. So I've many. All day quoting. You have to remember, Ed Rage wasn't just about jungle. No, it wasn't. No, you're Rage right. Rage came before jungle. Yeah, for real. You have to remember, we innovated jungle at Rage. So there's a whole history of acid house and house music to talk about as well. You also got to remember and as techno. well, we played, even at it's only probably the last year, but up to the last year, we were playing 80% house. 
You know, we were, we were playing a very small section of the jungle. Um, so house music has got to be talked about as well. It was mainly house, especially when we first started in the main room. We were mainly playing house music. You know, we were playing stuff like Roger Sanchez. We used to play B-sides of house mixes. Dave Moradis used to do a thing called Red Zone mixes. We used to play a lot of that stuff. And then um, we incorporated it with breakbeat stuff. It was probably the most innovative music club there was at, at that time. And there was a lot, because you have to remember, that was the rave generation, the real rave generation. Rave was just a new thing, so everybody was out. Everybody was going out, like, to M25 parties and whatever, but they always met up at Rage on a Thursday. Yeah, and, and you know, Rage was... Rage, you've got to remember, before we even started playing at Rage, Rage, it was a night. It was already a night. Colin Favour, Trevor Farm. It was a thing. It was a thing, but then we played upstairs in the star bar and we went in there and we done, done our kind of unique take on dance music and um we earned our stripes basically. we earned our stripes yeah we really did and it's it's like it really was we were dj's second playing in the second room but we were carrying so much people we were crazy in the main dance floors crazy so the kevin millions had to reassess what was going on and try and change things about. Yeah, because the balance weren't right, because right. it's literally, we had everyone in room two, and people, hundreds of people on the stairs trying to get in, while the main dance floor was kind of mm -hmm. empty. So he was kind of like, what is going on here? If Jungle hadn't come along, I'd still be playing house music. That's my first love, I'll yeah. tell anybody that. That's my first love of dance music, is house music. And, um, you know, for me, that's... I used to listen to, you know, disco and all funk and hip-hop beforehand, but house captured me, it caught me, and made me want to do what I do today. You've got to remember, it caught us at a certain age, in, at a certain point in our lives, when we were kind of like, you know, we was coming out of being teenagers, we were young men, and, and, you know, we wanted to venture into something different. And this, to us, to me and Groove, We'd been listening to punk, but you've got to remember, Rear Groove was music from the 70s and the 60s, and we missed that era, but so we really got into that. But this was completely the opposite. This was the future. And me and Groove caught onto it real quick. You've got to remember, let's, let's not forget, there wasn't that many people into it. You know, houses, when you look at house music now, worldwide, it's the biggest music out there, but- It wasn't like that. It weren't like that. There was a couple of nightclubs that played house. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? And a lot of people that say they were, were there, they weren't there. I mean, acid, we, uh, if you, when you break it down, Acid House was the Antichrist of music at the time. Was, it was, it was. Probably kind of like Jungle is now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You know I mean? But it was like, it, it was, was a bad child of was, music. Yeah. yeah, people frowned on it because there was involvement. People did, involved it with drugs. People say it was devil music. People didn't get it. It was going really fast and they, you know, it was a complete departure from funk and hip hop. And so. remember the other side of it as well is like, the homophobism back in the day. Yeah, no, absolutely. House music was prevalent among, among gay gay communities. They loved it. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? So, like, you know, coming from where I come from, people used to say, oh, if you listen to house music, it's going to turn you gay and stuff like that. Just real it's homophobic real nonsense. Shit. Yeah. But I've always had in my head, how can music can ever, ever be gay? That doesn't yeah. even make sense. Yeah. yeah. So I never, I never went with that, and I'm glad I didn't. Yeah, exactly. Look, look at where we are today. Yeah, we were some of the first black DJs to play house music in the UK. But then I've got to give um, a big shout out to Steve Jackson, who played house music, Colin Dale, who was black and played house music, and Carl Cox. But there was a handful of us. Um, you know, even Frosty and Brian were playing house music. But, you know, there was... You have to remember, at that time, a lot of black guys couldn't even get into nightclubs. Yeah, for real. That's, that's how that's deep real that talk. shit was. So, that's real talk. That's what people need to remember. It was a... We, we battled for our music, do you get what I'm Absolutely. saying? Absolutely. We battled to be able to play it. We battled to even to get into nightclubs. To, night to get to into play. the nightclubs. That's, how, that's the area where we come from. You know, we, we, that's one of the reasons why we, we became DJs. To get into nightclubs. Just, just to, to get in. Honest, that's, that's not even a joke. And, um, and also you've got to remember when Acid House started, a lot of it came from my B-Farm. With Paul Locofold, Johnny Walker, Colin Hudd. We were kind of coming with a different take. We were coming with a more black take on the music. And I remember, 
I remember house DJ saying, you know, why don't you play vocals? Why, why do you not just play rhythm tracks? And we were just into, we weren't into the vocal thing. We were more into kind of like rolling out and, you know, Rhythms. the original rollers. Yeah, you know, the African drums. The that's African what, drums and that kind of vibe. With. That's, that, that's what we gravitated to and vocals yeah. kind of just spoiled that hence, all up. Hence moving towards the breakbeat element there you of the house. So that also goes back to breakbeat and finding raw break beats and speeding them up. Because we that vocal thing weren't really us. We were just into the tribal side of things, man. Yeah, I find it surreal. Do you know what, what though? As well, I'm really proud. I'm really proud. Can't not be proud. When I see how big drum and bass is now, you've got drum and bass festivals. You know, drum and bass. You know, everyone starts going, oh, I don't want drum and bass to sell out. Who cares about that? You know, it's just. Sell out. It makes sense. It doesn't even make sense. It's, 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 it's BPM. You it's, can't sell exactly. out. Exactly. You can't possible. sell this thing out. So, you know, we're just really intensely proud that we're, you know, attached to the beginnings of this music. And, you know, and see drum and bass now. I don't feel no way at all about guys that have made, you know, become superstars out of it. Because yeah, I, don't feel I don't feel any way about that. I feel I'm, proud. I'm happy, yeah, yeah, because I'm like proud of those other guys. Day, if you if you looked in a dictionary and you put down jungle drum and bass, you'll see our names next to it. <laughs> yeah, That's the bottom yeah, line. Yeah. And there's real. no bigger comp yeah. accomplishment than that. That is true. That that is so true. That is so true. So the bigger it gets, you know, the more <laughs> Yeah, the people... more I'll be loved. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have more passion for it than I ever have. Because I'm always on the hunt for new music and the new artists and being the first to do something else and being on the first to do... I like being first to things. I'm still on that mindset. If I even hear another DJ outside from Fabio play a tune, I won't play it again. Yeah. I'm still yeah, on no, that it's mindset. True. No, I'm still no, on that mindset. I, I, you know, I hear that. I just love new music and new artists. And to have a circuit that we've actually managed to build up with so many people around us that we all grew with, it's beautiful. And yeah, you know, and we haven't, everybody thinks drum and bass is massive, but we haven't even touched what, yeah. what techno does or what house music does. Mm. We've got a long way to go. No, yeah, true. It's, but I think, I think it's getting there. It's getting there. And you know, and, you, and also, you know, we've got to give props to the young guys coming through. Exactly. You know, the guys yeah, like Boo. There's no us. Exactly. Guys like Boo, K Motions, K9, all of those guys are moving it on. And it's great to see it. Cause you know, me and Groove always strive for new music. And even if we don't understand it, you know, we try and appreciate, I try and understand it, even if it's not, it's out of my comfort zone or yeah, what I normally listen to. Yeah, incorporate something that's there that will work with exactly. what's going on, even if it's not my thing. Because we always want to, we always want to play music for young people as well. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's not just kind of like playing for the older crowd. The young people are very important to us. 